Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and this is my review of Star Trek Discovery Season 1, Episode 8. The title's called something like, it's that, if you want peace, prepare for war uh, thing. So, uh, a funny thing's been happening to me recently with Season 1 episodes of Star Trek Discovery, in that uh, I keep falling asleep in the middle of them. But it's a restful sleep, it's, you know. Um, uh, so for uh, several of the videos, I would watch Whiskey, and I called it Star Trek Discovery, and it was uh, fun, uh, but also expensive. And then I, uh, I left the garage open one night, so I'm, I, I punished myself. I, I'm not allowed to drink whiskey uh, uh, for, I don't know, X amount of days. Um, so I've been doing these, uh, uh, watching and reviewing them, uh, Stone Cold Sober, and uh, I like them, but I keep falling uh, asleep. So uh, I really, really like season two. Uh, although I got seriously bummed out, like some kind of like super over, well, not overly dramatic, but I actually got legitimately sad when I saw the news that Anson Mount was uh, not coming back for season three. So uh, season three got renewed a couple weeks ago. About a month ago, Anson did a tweet that said something about unemployment, and people thought it meant that the show was canceled, but him and Rebecca Romaine had only signed one-year contracts. I only remember her being in one scene, um, so I'm wondering maybe she's going to be a bigger deal, and it doesn't sound like there's a spinoff. Uh, it sounds like it's just like a one-and-done. Obviously, they had to... Uh, Season one had Lorca and Giorgio. Uh, uh, season two had, well, Saru is still the acting captain. Um, and then uh, then they have uh, Pike. Pike's been amazing, but Pike's leaving. I mean, honestly, it makes sense. It looks like the storyline, like, except for the flashbacks, that the actual storyline of season two, it looks like it only stretches over about a couple of weeks. You know, they're... they're uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Correct me if there's any time skips in there besides the time travel and besides the flashbacks. I'm talking about is there uh, is there ever an episode where they say, oh, we've been here for three weeks or actually, you know what? I think one of their studies when they were, they were near, uh, they said, oh, you know, we've been here for a couple weeks. It's time to leave. So what I'm saying is Pike in the Star Trek universe was only the uh, captain of the Discovery for, let's say, weeks to a couple months and he has a reason his the enterprise is damaged it's in dry dock being repaired and you know uh he's an actual captain so uh they gave him a command and they gave him a mission with the seven uh seven signals or seven stars so i was pretty bummed out about this <laughs> getting anyway season two i'm always i don't fall asleep but season one i last two or three episodes i just fall asleep right in the middle of it i wake up and uh, I finish it. It's very pleasant. Like I said, all the stuff I read about season one, like, she's not a Mary Sue. She's a specialist. She still has a life sentence. She's always getting kicked in the chest and thrown across the, you know, a room or thrown across a, a beach. Uh, she makes mistakes. Like, I, I'm not seeing Michael Burnham as a Mary Sue. Um, and at least in the middle, I know, I think people have said it gets really crazy at the end of season one, but in the middle, it's not very dark, and, uh, this actually seemed like it could have been an episode of almost any other, uh, uh, Star Trek series. They go down to a planet for a reason, there's a little twist to and it leads to some, you know, kind of character moment with one of the leads, and that's what happened. So there's two stories here, there's the I don't know what I, these Klingons like. I actually respect the, I respect the the design. There's the whole 25% thing that supposedly they have to do. Everything has to be 25% than the other. I I I. It's a good design for an alien race. Uh, I really resisted calling them Klingons just because they look very different. They always remind me of like uh, like pecans or something like that. It feels like their skull is most of their face and they don't have like cartilage or fat. It's just, it's almost kind of like a, a, a beak of a head. But, um, so there was some Klingon stuff and, and what I'm saying is they're finally starting to actually seem like Klingons to me and not just some generic 
other type of alien. So we got the girl, Klingon, whose name I don't remember. Um, and uh, we got uh, Admiral Cornwell or a wall. Um, uh, and uh, so uh, she's basically wanting to defect. And um, there's a lot of infighting with the Klingons. That stuff was okay. Uh, I'm not crazy about it. And then we cut to the, uh, you know, the uh, Discovery and they got the, there's this crystalline planet that vibrates at a frequency and you could use it as kind of like an Ansible from the uh, uh, Ender's Game. Um, oh no, not, it's not like an Ansible. That would just be subspace. Uh, uh, it's, uh, you can basically use the vibrations as a sonar to detect people using the uh, cloaking device, you know, Typically, it's a Romulan thing, but the Romulans have uh, uh, traded it to the Klingons. And then the Klingons are trading it to other Klingons. So it's a valuable planet, and they get sent down there. And then there's an energy bean, which is a very Star trek -y thing. Um, and uh, it's a pretty cool story with, uh, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, you get uh, ensorcelled or brainwashed, and they get Saru first, and then they get uh, Ash Tyler. Uh, but they don't get uh, Michael Burnham. But the thing that was really interesting is Saru, he's like that that person who just can't handle their liquor. Like, when they try to take him over, they really take him over. And they do a good explanation of it. You know, so these things are supposed to bring you peace. Uh, but the thing is, uh, to Saru, who is a prey species that's just literally meant to die and be fed or enslaved, I, they still haven't made it clear. Um, uh, he's not used to ever not, he's not used to peace of any kind, any kind of peace of mind. So when he get when he gets peace, he's like, I'm going to peace the shit out of everyone. <laughs> like he, you're going to, you're going to join his peaceful, uh, cult or he's going to kick, he's going to 300 kick you in the chest with one of his hooves. I always wonder if, uh, the actor, I think his name is Doug Jones. Does he wear the... They don't really make a big point of it, and they don't show it a lot, but Saru has, has hooves instead of feet. Um, does he... Do you think he wears them all the time? Or he just has, like... They're like, oh, you, you know, it's just going to be medium shots. You can just wear the your regular boots or your platform boots so you're, you know, a lot taller than everyone. I'm thinking they probably switch it around. So I thought that twist with Saru the most peaceful guy or let's say the most passive guy um he's uh although his his he, he talked about sensing danger in his oh wait because it wasn't danger it was peace so anyway this uh these energy beings are trying to bring peace so what they do is uh, uh saru kind of gets uh brainwashed and tries to make the starfleet people just stay on the planet um they're able to get a signal out so then the planet is or the beings are like oh let's bring everyone together togetherness means friendship so they actually call the klingons to where the discovery is and the discovery is just like meep thanks a lot um so uh what looks to be a one-parter is actually a two-parter um uh besides that uh they have stamets in there who i really like he's a really great character i always like when they show his little shunts in his forearm i don't know i'm like really into that um, so it was a good uh, episode, not particularly groundbreaking or like the best ops, uh, episode, but it was solid. I liked it. So anyway, uh, uh, I'm getting to the inspection station. So uh, thanks for watching, and I'll probably have another video up tomorrow. Bye.